Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Sure. Pour me a cup, Gracie. You know, Maxwell House is always good to the last <laughs> drop. And that drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With yours truly, Bill Goodwin, the music of Meredith Wilson and his orchestra, our happy postman, Mel Blank, and Lorene Tuttle, Elliot Lewis, and Wally Mayer. For your Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for your everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House, the coffee that's always good to the last drop. It's late afternoon at the Burns's, and a very hungry George is just arriving home for dinner. He hurries up the walk, reaches for the doorknob, when suddenly, from inside the house... Ah! Holy smoke! Gracie is being murdered! Gracie, what happened? Nothing, dear. I'm listening to my favorite radio mystery, The Tall Man. We got you this time, Tall Man. <laughs> you like that? Shut that off. Well, what's the matter? Gracie, stop with these radio mysteries. I'd like some dinner. I'm hungry. But I want to listen to The Tall Man. Nuts to The Tall Man. How about The Hungry Man? Oh, I haven't heard that program. When is it on? I'm The Hungry Man. Oh. I'm starved. Oh. I'm famished. I could eat a horse. Oh, well, then you should have called me from the office. I was planning on lamb chops. <laughs> yes. Look, oh, Gra quiet, dear. I want to finish listening to The Tall Man. You remember it's about that marvelous detective named Rudy and his darling wife, Trudy? Yes, a darling girl. Oh, yes. she's just charming. They're so in love. Right in the middle of a murder, they lean over the victim and hold hands. Yeah, they're romantic. Oh, yes. It's so exciting tonight. I'll turn it on again. Rudy and Trudy have been captured by the master criminal. Mm. He's been chained in a dungeon, and he's torturing them. Mm, well, that I'd like to hear. Shh. Are you afraid, Trudy? That's Rudy. Yes, I guess that is. Not when I'm with you, Rudy. Mm. That's Trudy. I know, I know. <laughs> I can't bear to look, Rudy. What torture is he using on you? He's burning the soles of my feet with red-hot iron. <laughs> Does it hurt, darling? I find it rather annoying. <laughs> Rudy's so brave. I'll call him Spunky after this. <laughs> what is he doing now, Rudy? He's pouring molten lead in my ear. <laughs> Does it hurt? Beg pardon? <laughs> is it frightfully painful? I'm beginning to get bored. <laughs> Care for a kiss, sweetheart? Naturally. Mm. Oh, Rudy's so romantic. He's a romantic chap, yes. I think I shall break these chains and capture this ruffian. Do that, Rudy. I shall, Trudy. Oh, Rudy's so strong. He's a brute, yes. A brute. Stand back, tall man. I got you covered with my Tommy gun. I'm not impressed. Take that. Ooh! <laughs> how splendid, Rudy. Now, how shall we escape from this dungeon? Simple, Trudy. I shall take the springs from that bed and build a radio broadcasting station. Oh, no. <laughs> then we'll radio for assistance. Oh, Rudy's so brilliant. Smart as a whip, yes. You're a most amazing man. Precious. Thank you. Would you care for a kiss, sweetheart? Naturally. Mm. <laughs> mm. Shut that thing off. Shut it off. Shut it off. Oh, aren't they wonderful, George? Yeah, they're wonderful, wonderful. Now, how about some food? I'm starving. Oh, food. The tall man and his wife would never bother with food. They're too busy discovering murders and grilling suspects. All right. Grill me a suspect. I'll eat that. <laughs> oh, George, why can't you be more like Rudy the tall man? 
Does he yap at his wife about cooking and things like that? No. He's romantic. When he comes home, he kisses her hand. All right. Stick your hand up to my mouth. With your appetite, I wouldn't dare. <laughs> well, all right, dear, all right. I'll show you how quickly I can get domestic. Now, how would you like some nice lamb chops, mashed potatoes and gravy, fresh asparagus, green salad and apple pie? Great. All right, I'll call the Brown Derby and make a reservation. <laughs> you really, you really got domestic there. Mm. Oh, brother, I can eat a horse. I'm really hungry. Hello? Is that you, Dave? Yeah. What's on your mind? Oh, Donna, someone else is on the line. Hey, listen, Dave. Got a little job to do. Got to get rid of a rat. Oh, it's a couple of killers. Well, hang up. Okay. When do we do the job? How about tonight? We'll collect overtime. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to kill a man tonight. Oh, stop. Where is the rat? 360 North Camden Drive. Meet me there in two hours. What if there's no one home? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll call and check on that. Okay. What's it gonna be? Poison? Nah. Nah, that's too slow. I got you, Pete. I'll see you there. So long. I heard it. I heard the whole plot to murder a man. Oh, we've got to warn him, George. Where's 360 North Camden Drive? That's our house. Well, good. Let's go. Yo, George! What's the matter? The killers are after you. Gracie, you've been listening to too many of these crime programs. You're imagining this. You are here already. It's the killers. Oh, it's Bill Goodwin. I saw him through the window. Come in. Hi, Burns. What's new? Oh, Bill. They're going to shoot George. Why, did he break a leg? <laughs> I, w I wish it had been the killers. Oh, Bill, this is serious. Someone's out to get George. And I know how those killers work. They'll shoot him and stab him and strangle him. And then they'll put him in cement and drop him in the ocean. And George can't swim. <laughs> yes, and it's bad for my rheumatism. Gracie, relax. Nobody is after me. I'm an entertainer. Every week I sing and tell jokes to 20 million people. Who'd want to kill me? 20 million people. <laughs> Bill, please remember who pays your salary. You're not working for Hope now. No, that's right. Now I'm working for charity. <laughs> Why, boys, you... Boys, boys, how, how can you fight among yourselves when George's life is in danger? Bill... Why don't you be George's bodyguard? Thanks, but I don't need a guard. No, but you could sure use a body. <laughs> I don't believe any of this killer stuff. Who? Hello? Hello? Is George Baines there? Y yes. George, it's one of the killers. Oh, stop kidding. Give me the phone. Hello? Baines? That's me. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure that you were home. <laughs> See you at nine o'clock. You were right. <laughs> the killers are coming oh, for me. Oh, George, I think I'm going to faint. Oh, darn it, he beat me to it. <laughs> Stardust. Seems like only yesterday when I first heard that tune, yet it must be 20 years. That's right, Bill. Hoagie Carmichael wrote Stardust way back in 1929. 1929. Short skirts and bobbed hair were still in fashion then, and the country was dancing something called the Lindy Hop. Ah, sure, I remember, Meredith. Lots of memories are wrapped up in a tune like Stardust. Your first real dance when Dad let you borrow the family jalopy. The way you felt about your best girl when you saw her in the music and moonlight. Warm, happy memories out of yesterday. Moments that belong so truly and inescapably to the American scene. Reminds me how, down through the years, Maxwell House coffee has become so real a part of the American scene. We Americans love coffee, 
It's our national drink. And today, more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee at any price. It's Maxwell House wherever you go. How explain this amazing preference? Listen. Flavor is the answer, of course. That good-to-the-last-drop Maxwell House flavor that results from the skillful blending of these highland-grown Latin American coffees. Manizales for mellowness. Madelines for richness. Other choice coffees for vigor. And Bucaramanga's for full body. All meaning great coffee at the peak of flavorful perfection. Friends, why not make yours coffee at its best? You can for just a fraction of a penny more per cup than you'd pay for the cheapest coffee sold. Just say, Maxwell House. Always good to the last... Drop. Oh, George, what'll we do? The killers are coming for you. Yeah. Any minute now, somebody will take a pot shot at me. Yeah. Get your stomach away from that window. <laughs> Gee. Who can I turn to for help? Oh, I don't... Oh, I've got it. I know just the one who can save you. The tall man. That's a radio program. But I read in a magazine that Rudy and Trudy are really man and wife. And I know where they live. Come on. Gracie, listen. Radio stars are not the same in person as they are on the air. On their programs, Sinatra Skinny, Jack Benny is stingy, and Eddie Cantor is an old man. But have you seen them in person? Yeah, and that clinches my argument. Come on. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Oh, well, here's the tall man's house. I'll ring the bell. Oh, Rudy can save you from those killers. He's so strong and brave and clever. Well, what is it? Are uh, you, uh, Trudy? That's right. What do you want? Well, we want to speak to your husband, the tall man. Hey, Rudy, you've got visitors. Oh, not now, Trudy. I'm in agony. <laughs> this hangnail is killing me. <laughs> A hangnail bothers the tall man? Oh, there, there, there must be some mistake. I know he's brave. Well, look at this piece of skin dangling down. My own skin. It's almost an eighth of an inch long. I told you I'd cut it off. No, no, don't touch me with those awful scissors. I'd faint. <laughs> hey, he's brave. Look, let's go, Gracie. I think we're... Well, what the... can I do for you? Please make it brief because I'm suffering dreadfully. Oh, <laughs> yes. A hangnail can be painful. I suppose you hurt your finger when you knocked out a bunch of gangsters. Ha! Huh. Tell them how you did it, stupid. <laughs> I was trying to open a jar of peanut butter. <laughs> Spilled it all over the floor, too. Well, it was too heavy for me. <laughs> Stop making excuses. You're clumsy, that's all. But I, I thought he was so smart about doing things with his hands, like making a radio set out of the bed spring. Him? Oh, Butterfingers. Sure, he dropped the peanut butter. <laughs> I'll never forget the time I asked him to put a new bulb on the lamp. He broke it all to pieces. That was your fault. You should have told me which end of the bulb to screw in. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get somebody else to help me. I don't no, think I George, got a chance. No, no. I think I'm ruined if I get this kid. Rudy, my husband is in danger, and we thought that you might be his bodyguard. Ah! What oh, am I doing? What's the matter? Look, crawling on the floor, a bug. Want me to kill it, strong heart? No, no, just shoo it out. You know I can't stand the sight of blood. I'm sorry, what were you saying? Well, okay. um, I did want you to guard my husband, but somehow in person you don't seem to be like you are on the radio. I should hope not. That tall man is such a brutal character. Yeah, she's a bad man. I'd be much happier if they let me play Henry Aldrich. <laughs> He'd be even happier if they let him play Ma Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> now you stop teasing me, Trudy. 
Time to put another cold compress on my finger. Okay, stick it out. There. <laughs> yeah, it's cold. It's cold. I'm freezing. Yes, fast. it's I cold. Can't stand it's it. cold. It's cold. Will you stop yelling, or will I slug you? <laughs> All right, I'll be brave. Would you care for a little kiss, sweetheart? Oh, shut up. Come on, Gracie, let's get out. <laughs> couldn't help us, Meredith, so now it's up to you and me to save George's life. Is that why we came down here to the underworld, Gracie? Yes, this is the same tough saloon we were in last week. We'll ask questions and find out who's after George. I get it. We'll pretend to be crooks again. Right. Hey, you, bartender, let's have some soybeans. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what'll it be? I'll have a beer. What kind? Root. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, uh, ain't I seen your face someplace else? No, it's always been right here in the front of me head. <laughs> hey, I remember you now. You was here last week. Said your name was Gracie Catraz. That's me, sister to Alcatraz. <laughs> Want some information? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What's the dope? He's my friend, Meredith Wilson. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what do you want to know? Well, there's a couple of killers trying to knock off a pal of mine named Pretty Boy Burns. I want protection for him. Never heard of him. Here's his picture. Pretty Boy, huh? Yeah. Sure outgrew it, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. I want to know who's trying to kill him and why. I don't know nothing about it. Oh, won't talk, huh? Suppose I have Meredith work you over. He ain't man enough to hide a flea. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, I don't know nothing. If you want protection for Burns, why don't you get him a couple of flat feet? It's no good. He's already got a couple. <laughs> that doesn't. Will you get out of here, sister? Yeah. Come on, Meredith. <laughs> Meredith Wilson and his orchestra in Tippity Doo Da. George, while I put these false whiskers on you. Gracie, do you think this plan will work? Well, certainly. You've got to escape from the killers, and a disguise is the only way. Nobody will know you're disguised as an old man. What are you doing now? Well, I'm drawing wrinkles on your face with my eyebrow pencil. There. Now, put on these spectacles and take this cane. Well, how do I look? Uh, your own wife wouldn't know you. I'm not so sure. What did you say, Edgar? <laughs> Uh, Edgar? See, your own wife. Yeah, you didn't recognize me. Now, don't be afraid to open the door, dear. No one will recognize you. 
Good evening, Mr. Burns. <laughs> Here's a special delivery letter for you. Uh, Mr. Postman, don't you uh, notice something different about George? Yes. I've never seen him looking better. <laughs> better? He looks so much younger than usual. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Postman. Goodbye, and remember, keep smiling. <laughs> Come on, get this disguise off me. I've got to think of a plan. The killers will be here any minute. Yeah, I've got it. I'll put a dress on you and disguise you as a woman. They'll see right through that. Not if you wear a slip under it. <laughs> well, nuts to that. I'm through with disguises. Let the killers come. I'll fight the man to man. I'm not afraid. <gasps> oh, darling. There they are. Shall I open the door, George? George? George, come out from under the divan. Half of you is still sticking out. And it makes it a very tempting target. Hey, what goes on here? Why don't you open the door when a fella... What's George doing under the couch? Developing pictures? <laughs> now, he thought you were the killers, Bill. They're due any minute. Yeah, Bill. I've only got a few more minutes to live. My whole life is flashing before me. My childhood. The day I became 21. The day I went to war. Tell me, George, was it tough at Gettysburg? <laughs> That's right. Joke while the killers come closer and closer. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean this stuff about the killers is really on the level? Well, certainly it is. Well, why didn't you two say so? I'll save you, George. I'll set a trap for those guys. Wonderful. Now, Gracie, get me a long piece of string, a shotgun, and a kettle full of boiling water. I'll fix those killers. Oh, right away, Bill. How does the trap work, Bill? Well, as the killers turn the doorknob, yeah. it pulls the string, yeah. which sets off the shotgun. It shoots the killers. No, no. no huh? Something else happens. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now, here's what happens. It shoots a hole in the kettle and lets the boiling water run out. And it runs on the killers. No. Not yet. <laughs> it runs into a percolator, makes a pot of Maxwell House coffee. <laughs> what happens to the killers? They smell the coffee and make a beeline to the kitchen to get some. They forget all about me. Sure, sure, they forget. I you said blame that. them? No. <laughs> Maxwell House is rich, delicious, and mellow. That famous Maxwell House flavor, you know, is the result of careful selection and blending of premium Latin American coffees radiant roasted to perfection. It's no wonder more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in the world. Bill, are you just going to let the killer sit there and drink the coffee? Oh, no, no, George. Oh, of you course got not. Yeah. I thought so. You see, this is National uh -oh. Donut Week. We'll give him some donuts, too. Yeah, that is good. <laughs> what a combination. And a good trap. Donuts. <laughs> donuts and Maxwell House coffee. And a new partner for Gracie, because I'll be dead. <laughs> Maxwell House is the very best in coffee drinking pleasure, yet it costs but a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee you can buy. That's why Maxwell House is the choice of so many millions of Americans today. They know today's coffee buy is Maxwell House, the coffee that's always good to the last drop. Bill, I don't think much of your plan. Well, George, except for one little flaw, it's a wonderful plan. Yeah, but when the killers get through with the donuts and coffee, they'll murder me. That's the one little flaw. <laughs> Outside of that, you got Bill, some fear. And the kettle... Uh, oh! George. What? What happened? The killers. The killers? Look, they're coming up the front walk. What'll I do? Where can I hide? I know. The closet. No. No, George, don't go in there. You're gonna face these killers like a man. You're not gonna hide in that closet. Why not? Because that's where I'm hiding. <laughs> My pal. Oh, they're almost to the door, George. Now they've stopped to look at the address. I'm gonna hide in the cellar. Tell them I'm not here. Get rid of them. No, George, Bill, come back. Come... Oh, all right, I'll face them alone. I'll save George from those killers. This the right place, Dave? Yeah, 360. Let's make this a quick one, Pete. Well, shouldn't take us long to get rid of one rat. Nah. No. Nah, no, it ain't like a termite job. Yeah. <laughs> the jobs I hate are them silverfish. <laughs> Well, ants and moths ain't no bargain either. Uh-huh. What a lousy racket we're in, huh? You know, if I had it to do over again, I wouldn't be an exterminator. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, me neither. 
Hey, uh, when did this guy Burns call about the rat in his cellar? Oh, that was more than a month ago. Well, you know how the orders pile up. When I spoke to him today, he acted like he'd forgot all about it. Well, come on, come on, let's get it over with. You come in. Uh, we called you today, lady. We're here. Oh, yeah, to... I know why you're here. Okay. Where's the rat? Uh... <laughs> He, he went to Florida. Florida? Doctor's orders. Hey, look. We got no time for jokes, lady. That rat's in the cellar, right? Yeah, how did you know? We make our living this way. Let's get busy, Dave. Oh, wait, wait. Please don't kill him. What's eating you, lady? I love that little rat. You love him? Hey, look, lady, you're kidding. No. No, well, ain't he a pest? Don't he sneak around at night and eat up all the food? Don't he cost you money? Well, yes, but I love the little rat. <laughs> look, look at it this way, lady. Don't it scare you when you see them little beady eyes looking at you? <laughs> and them, them little gray whiskers are twitching, huh? I love the little rat. Well, for Pete's sake, why? Stop talking like my mother. Huh? <laughs> I love him because he's mine. I've nursed him when he was sick, shared his sorrows and joys. He's my boopsy boy. You, uh, <clears throat> you call him boopsy boy? <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Well, it's a nice name. Oh, he's wonderful. You should have seen him in Vaudeville. Vaudeville? Uh-huh. <laughs> Sounds like an educated rat. No, no, he never got past the fourth grade. Hey, look. What do you make of this, Dave? Nuttier than a fruitcake. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, uh look, lady... <laughs> We won't hurt the little fella. Nah, nah, we, we, we'll give him gas. He won't feel nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then we'll pick him up by the tail and carry him out. Yeah. <laughs> this I gotta see. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this guy just popped out of the closet? He's Boopsy Boy's best friend. <laughs> you and the rat are friends? Oh, sure. I've known the little guy for years. We wear each other's neckties. <laughs> Another loony. Let's get out of here. No, nuts tonight. I'm here to kill that rat, and I'm going to go down the basement and do it. Oh, no, no, please. Get away from that door. Hey, come on, Dave. Come on, we're getting out of here. What happened, Pete? Well, if you think those two are nuts, you ought to see the idiot they keep in the basement. <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. Yours truly, Bill Goodwin. The George Burns and Gracie Allen show is written by Paul Henning and Keith Fowler. Till next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House. Now stay tuned in for Noah Webster Says, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Mom dismayed by the breakfast parade? She'll thank her stars for instant Maxwell House coffee. It's instant, it's new, it's good to the last drop, too. Yes, trust Maxwell House to make a better instant coffee. True coffee flavor, true coffee aroma, because it's all coffee made from America's favorite, the famous Maxwell House blend. And thrifty, a jar of instant Maxwell House makes fully as much as a pound of regular coffee. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>